Welcome to homecampus.com.sg. Here is a word problem for you. It says that Tim started from his home and drove one and a half hours to meet his uncle with whom he spent three and a quarter hours. Then he drove a fifth of an hour to see his grandmother and spent two and a half hours with her. Finally, he drove back home in one and three fifth hours. Altogether, how many hours did he spend outside before returning home? Okay, let's put all this information on a timeline because that's what this question is all about. So Tim starts from his home and drives one and a half hours. Okay, so if this is one, then this would be about one and a half hours. Okay, so from here to here is one and a half hours. Okay, so he starts from his house. TH Tim's house and drives one and a half hours to reach uncle's house. Okay, it's UH. And then he spends three and a quarter hours with his uncles. Okay, so he chit chats with his uncle for about three and a quarter hours. So that would be one, two, and three, and maybe about this much is a quarter. So altogether, this is three and quarter hours okay so he chit chats for three and a quarter hours with his uncle and then he drives a fifth of an hour to see his grandmother now a fifth of an hour is actually not much it's just a small fraction so this is let's say a fifth of an hour and that's how much time he takes to reach his grandma's house so this is grandma's house then he chit chats a bit more Okay, this time with his grandmother and he chit chats actually for two and a half hours. So maybe until here. So from here to here is two and a half hours. Okay, now he's still at his grandmother's house and he's chit chatting. And after two and a half hours of chit chat, what he does is he drives back home and he takes one and three fifth hours to drive back home. So this is one hour and maybe about this much is three fifth of an hour. So this all together is one and three fifths hours. Okay. And when it's one and three fifth hours, he is already back home. So this is Tim's house again. So all together, how many hours did he spend outside before returning home is view is what we have to find out. So all together, how much time did he spend or how many hours did he spend? Well, all together, he spent one and a half hours plus three and a quarter hours plus a fifth of an hour plus two and a half hours, plus one and three fifth hours. That's how much time he spent outside before returning home. So all we have to do is add up all these numbers. Okay, so let's add one and a half hours to three and a quarter hours to one fifth of an hour to two and a half hours to one and three fifth hours. Okay, now what we have is a couple of mixed numbers and a proper fraction. Now we know that to add mixed fractions or mixed numbers, what we must first do is convert them to improper fractions, right? We did that in a previous video. And uh, if uh, it's not very clear to you why we do that, then I suggest that you do go watch that concept video of how to add mixed fractions or mixed numbers. Okay, do go watch that. It's a very simple video. And I bet that things will make more sense to you then. All right, so what we're going to do is first of all, convert these mixed numbers, these four mixed numbers to improper fractions. Okay, now how do you convert a mixed number to an improper fraction? Well, Let's take, for example, the first mixed number one and a half. Okay, so we take this fraction one and a half. I'm doing this here, the conversion, the working on the top right corner. So you take one and a half and to convert it to the improper fraction format, what you do is you multiply the whole number, okay, which in this case is one with the denominator. Okay, we multiply it by the denominator, which is two. And then you add this one over here, which is the numerator. Okay, and you put everything upon two, which is the denominator. Okay, let's see one more time. You take this whole number part, okay, which is one. You take the whole number and you multiply it by the denominator. So it's one times two. Then you add this one over here. Okay, this one, which is the numerator. And then you put everything upon two. So it becomes a fraction. So one times two is two. 
and plus one is three so one and a half becomes three upon two so the mixed number one and a half is equal to the improper fraction three upon two now if it's not very clear to you as to why we are doing all this then please go watch the concept video in which i have explained how to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions and back okay so do go watch that video and things will be more clear to you then all right, so one and a half is equal to the improper fraction three upon two. How about three and a quarter? What's that makes number equal to an improper fraction? Well, we follow the same rule. You take three and a quarter. Now, what you do is you multiply three, the whole number, okay, by the denominator. So you do three times four plus you add the numerator, which is one, okay? To the product of three and four, you add one, and then you put everything upon four, so it becomes a fraction, all right? And then what's three times four? Well, three times four is 12, plus one is 13 upon this four, okay? The denominator. So three and a quarter is equal to 13 upon four in the improper fraction form. Now, nothing needs to be done to 1 upon 5 because it's already in the proper fraction format. Then, 2 and a half, well, you do 2 times 2, which is 4, plus the 1, which is 5. Okay, so you have 5 for the numerator and then upon 2, which is the denominator. How about 1 and 3 fifths? Well, same rule. 1 times 5 is 5 plus 3, the numerator, so 8 and the same denominator which is 5 so what we have now is we have converted all these mixed numbers to improper fractions so now all the numbers are in the fraction format so everything is in fraction and now adding up all these is relatively easier but we cannot add them like this because we have a few different denominators. Some of them are 2, some of them are 5, there's a 4 here. So there are so many different denominators. If we had to add all these fractions, we must at least find a common denominator for them, right? So what we're going to do next is we're going to find a common denominator for all these fractions. And for that, we know what we have to do is we have to find the least common multiple of the denominators okay now what are the denominators over here well there's a two here there's also a four here then there's a five here and then two and five these repeat okay so we have three different denominators and what we're going to do is we're going to have to find a common denominator for these denominators two four and five now what is the common denominator what can it be well, we learned in one of the previous concept lessons, concept videos, that to find a common denominator, we must actually find the least common multiple of 2, 4, and 5. So let's find out first the common multiple of 2, 4, and 5, and then find out the least common multiple amongst them, okay? Now, what are the multiples of 2? Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, just the table of 2, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and so on. And then the multiples of 4, which means the table or the times table of 4 is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and so on. And for 5 is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. Now, what's common? Well, what's common is 20, 20, and 20. And that's it's also the least common, right? So the common or the least common multiple of 2, 4, and 5 is 20. And that tells us that we have to convert each of these fractions, 3 upon 2, 13 upon 4, 1 upon 5, 5 upon 2, and 8 upon 5, so that each of them has a common denominator of 20. All right, so let's do that. Let's take each of these one at a time and convert it to a fraction so that its denominator is 20. Now, how to get 20 from 2? Multiply it by 10. Also multiply the numerator by 10. Okay, what we are doing is we are simply finding an equivalent fraction for the fraction 3 upon 2 and that gives us 30 upon 20, right? Now, if you're not very clear how to do this, why we are doing this, then please do go watch the concept video, okay? Just look under the playlist for fractions and there is a video on how to convert unlike fractions to like fractions and also equivalent fractions. Okay, so that's 30 upon 20 for 3 upon 2. How about 13 upon 4? Well, you have 13 upon 4 and you know you have to convert it to something upon 20. So you multiply the denominator by 5 and you get 20 and you must also multiply the numerator by 5. So 13 times 5 is 65. So you have 
65 upon 20, 65 upon 20 for 13 upon 4. For 1 upon 5, well, 1 upon 5 is equal to what? Times 4. So you do times 4 here and you have 4 upon 20. Okay. Then 5 upon 2 is what? Well, 5 upon 2 is equal to something upon 20. So times 10, right? 2 times 10 is 20. So 5 times 10 is 50. 50 upon 20. So that's 5 upon 2. How about 8 upon 5? Well, you have 8 upon 5 and you want it to be something upon 20. So you multiply 5 by 4 and you get 20. You also multiply 8 by 4 and you get 32. So 8 upon 5 is equal to 32 upon 20. Well, we have converted everything, all these fractions, so they have a common denominator. And I'm going to get rid of all this because I need some space here. Okay. Now, what I've done is I've converted all these unlike fractions to like fractions so that they all have a common denominator. And now it's very easy to add up all these fractions because I have a common denominator. So the common denominator will be 20, okay, and then we'll add up just these numerators, okay. Now 30 plus 65 is 95, plus 4 is 99, plus 50 is 149, plus 32, well what's that, 149 plus 32 is one here, one here, five, six, seven, eight, and 181. So we have 181 upon 20. So the sum of all these mixed numbers in this proper fraction is 181 upon 20. Well, that's how many hours he spent outside before returning home. But does this number make any sense to you? Does this fraction make any sense to you? Well, it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, okay, it's 181 upon 20 hours, but how many hours is that actually? Let's see. One final step that we have to do before we can call it end is to convert 181 upon 20, okay, this improper fraction back to a mixed number, okay? Because mixed numbers make more sense to you. I mean, one and a half hours makes more sense than three upon two hours, doesn't it? I mean, if you tell me he chatted with his uncle for three and a quarter hours, it makes more sense to me than if you told me that he chatted with his uncle for 13 upon four hours, right? Doesn't it? So let's do that. Let's convert this improper fraction to a mixed number so things make more sense, okay? Now, what we're going to do is convert this 181 upon 20 to a mixed number. And for that, we know what we have to do is divide the numerator, which is 181, by the denominator, which is 20. Okay, now what is that equal to? Well, 20 goes into 181 a whole of nine times and it leaves a remainder of one. So 181 upon 20, this many hours is actually equal to nine whole hours and one upon 20 of another hour. So nine and one upon 20 hours is how much time he spent outside before returning home. Now, if this one didn't make sense to you as to why we did this division to convert uh, improper fraction to a mixed number, then please do go watch the concept video in which I've explained why we use this method, okay? So nine and one upon 20 hours is how much time he spent or Tim spent outside before returning home. Now, like I said before, 9 and 1 upon 20 hours means a whole 9 hours and 1 upon 20th of another hour. Then you might wonder what is 1 upon 20th of an hour? How much is that equal to? Well, actually, 1 upon 20th can be converted to minutes. So 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes, then 1 upon 20th of an hour would be equal to how many minutes? Well, it'll be equal to 1 upon 20 times 60, right? So that will give you 3. So 1 upon 20th of an hour is actually equal to 3 minutes. So he spent a whole 9 hours plus 3 minutes outside before returning home. But since we are asked to find out how many hours he spent, I think there's a good enough answer, 9 and 1 upon 20th hours. Well, that brings us to the end of this word problem. I hope you've understood how to solve this word problem. And I also hope that now you'll go and solve some other word problems at www.homecampus.com.sg. This is M signing off for now. Bye-bye.